About 15 kilometers outside Gabon's capital, Libreville, a group of scientists are inspecting trees growing in the Monda forest. Monda is part of the Congo Basin rainforest, the second largest forest ecosystem in the world. The researchers are working with the country's Center for Scientific Research and Technology. They are out to prove that these pristine forests store a tremendous amount of carbon and if cut down, would release greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide, into the air, accelerating global warming. The amount of carbon stored in the trees is calculated using the tree's diameter, height, and species. Prince Bissimu has been studying trees here for the last three years. He uses special equipment that helps him climb 60 meters off the ground to measure the tree's height. Au départ, vous aviez peur. Ouais, vous avez d'abord peur. At the beginning, one can get scared, but then after a while, when you get used to climbing, you're not scared anymore, but it's still risky because sometimes you're not the only one up there. Sometimes there's a snake in the tree, and if you don't have the heart, you can end up jumping out. When you reach the summit, you see the whole forest, the canopy. It's vast and it's really beautiful. When I get to the top, I sit back for a bit and think about the canopy from up there. After a 40-year study, the researchers recently released findings indicating that African tropical forests, like Monda, absorb about 1.2 billion tons of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere annually, the equivalent of about 5% of global fossil fuel emissions. Africa has about 15% of the world's remaining forests, but logging and human settlement is fast reducing forest cover. That is contributing to the 20% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions that are from deforestation. On its part, Gabon has been trying to earn money from its forests in non-destructive ways, like ecotourism and bioprospecting, which is the search for plants and animals with medicinal value. Scientists here say African forests can help bring in even more money through carbon trading, which allows rich nations to offset emissions by paying poor countries to protect their forests. It shows that uh, you can get money for preserving your forest. Instead you're, giving, instead you're giving away a logging concession and you get money from that logging company as a permit. You can have the same amount of money or even more for just preserving it. So it's very important for African nations to know that they potentially have uh, a very important role to play in these climate change negotiations. It's like they have uh, a large stock of carbon and, and if they if the forest is being cut or locked, whatever disappeared, burnt, uh, changed by land use, then you will um, uh, increase the carbon gases in the atmosphere and that would make things worse. Over 40 years, forest researchers have measured the carbon in 79 places across West, Central and East Africa. The areas surveyed are mapped out using a Global Positioning System, or GPS, which helps the researchers locate the areas easily. Because of its rich biodiversity, sometimes the researchers can't identify the trees at Monda on the spot, so they collect leaf samples and fruits which are taken back to the lab for analysis. The petites enveloppes, 
C'est pour prendre les échantillons ADN. The small envelopes are used for DNA samples, which the specialists use to identify the plants. It's a new method to identify plants through their DNA. When back in Libreville, the scientists prepare the samples by drying and freezing them before they are identified. There now, we have just put the plants in the dryer so they can dry. Since there are not a lot of samples, they should dry in two days because it's dried by gas, which works very quickly. The scientists later file the samples in cabinets. Each compartment contains thousands of species, which are said to be only a fraction of Gabon's true biodiversity. Projects like these could help keep trees standing and slow greenhouse gas emissions in developing countries. But equally important, rich nations need to cut down on greenhouse gas emissions within their own borders. Governments will have to reflect this in the next climate deal if they are to reverse the negative effects of climate change around the world.